Welcome back to the NurseAnn.com podcast and audiobook reading. We're going to jump into chapter 16 of the Mental Files First Six Stories edition, and we're in book one. Chapter 16 is titled, The Unhappy Couple. And before we jump into that, if you want to find out what led up to this moment that's about to happen, you can listen to the other podcasts. It's chapters one through up to now, chapter 16. And or you can just get the whole series, the whole season. It's called The Mental Files by Nurse Anne. There's actually six separate stories. But to make it easier and cheaper, almost free, I put it in, also put it in one book, which is called The Mental Files. First six stories edition by Nurse Anne. That's Anne with a knee and that's on Amazon. So that being said, we are going to jump into this continuing drama. Chapter 16, The Unhappy Couple. Leon and Lita met for dinner at the new Thai restaurant that night. Relieved for a change in venue, from the usual bar crowd, Lita thought maybe Leon was starting to change a little. That thought was quickly dashed after he finished his usual round of drinks and continued to pressure her to loosen up and have one drink herself. Then, attempting to change the subject, Lita asked the officer about his day. Filling her in on his caseload for the day, Lita listened intently as her charming date talked. Asking Lita about her week, she could tell the bachelor looked uncomfortable when she started talking about her time in prayer that week. Not ready for his answer, Lita was unhappily surprised at what he said next. You know, Lita, I like you a lot, but... I feel like you're trying to pressure me with this church thing all the time, bluntly asserted Leon. Leon, you, you just asked me about my day, and I was telling you what I did, defended the shocked caseworker. You know, now I'm starting to get why you said you're always alone, Lita. What is your deal? Not everyone wants to be pressured about prayer and all that, continued the slightly intoxicated man. Hurt by the accusation and unwelcome comment, Lita started to get flustered. See, Lita, that's what I mean. You need to loosen up, continued her date. Overwhelmed with emotion, Lita started to sob. You, you know, Leon, I, I've been thinking, I think I might need a little time to myself uh, to think for a couple weeks about all of this. We seem to be going, well, maybe too fast. What? Are you kidding? retorted the angry officer. Well, then, let's just go now if you want. Upset at the turn of events, Leon and Lita walked to the parking lot to their separate cars. Overcome with emotion, Lita cried all the way to her lonely apartment. And guess what? That brings us to the end of Chapter 16. The Unhappy Couple. And like I said, if you want to get caught up on that series, you can listen to the podcast in order or just go ahead and get that book off of Amazon or any other site. It's available on Kindle and paperback. And as usual, we are going to tear apart this chapter as it relates to real life drama and inner thought struggles and we'll get some inspiration, encouragement, and also some biblical prescriptions to help navigate us on this life journey. So with that being said, we will jump into the files of nurseand.com to see what we're going to talk about as it relates to this story. So we're going to spin that wheel and see where we're going to land. Here it goes. Spin the wheel. We're going to land on nurseand.com and talk about what's going on. Spin it. All right. We 
are going to land on the relationship prescription tab. So Lita and Leon, and like many of us, have gotten into this relationship, but Lita was sensing a lot of red flags along the way, but she'd been alone for so long and not really sure about what to think since uh, Leon was so charming trying to sweep her off of her feet. So I don't know about you, but I know for me, I can attest, and you can maybe attest to this too, sometimes when you get into a new situation in life or new relationship or what have you, we can just go blazing almost or over the cliff, ignoring those red flags that are actually popping up all along the way, even trying to trip us to stop us from making those grand mistakes or at least just taking our time to have the best relationships and the best situation that is actually meant for us. So how can we look at those red flags and avoid situations along the way that might not be what's best? And as I've said before in another podcast, if you go to nurseand.com and click on the relationship tab, there is a great four-part series. I put the videos there in order. It's called um, The New Rules for Love, Sex, and Dating by Andy Stanley. And he really breaks it down on our ways of thinking and what we're taught in culture and how we, the things that we believe. And then just gives us an opportunity to stop and think about what might be a better plan for our life. Even the plan that God has designed for us so that we won't have a lot of misery and regrets. And there's also a um, couple good books books there for you to check out. One is called Sex in the City Uncovered, and that's really also about relationships and dating, and once again, what the culture teaches us versus what what's really true and what can lead us to the best relationships and not having a lot of sadness and regrets and mistakes. Another good book there about relationships is called Sandpaper People, and that's how to deal with people that rub us the wrong way. So whether we're at home, at work, in our neighborhoods, no matter our age, we're always going to have people trying to annoy, irritate us, or maybe we just have different styles. And that's just part of life. So learning how to deal with it can help out a lot. And brings me to another audiobook that I just finished. Um, is called A Gentle Answer by Scott Sauls. And it talks about... Um, just like in Proverbs 15, 1, where it says a soft answer or a gentle answer turns away anger or turns away wrath. And that was very enlightening to help us to slow down and think about the way we react, the way we answer, and finding out ways of communication without having all this anger. Which on the relationship tabs leads to another good book, which is by Dr. Charles Stanley called Surviving in an angry world and in that book is full of advice advice from the word of god helpful tips on why everyone's so angry and how we can deal with that and one more book that i left on that tab is called 30 days to taming your tongue by deborah smith pegwis and that was a really great book in a 30-day kind of devotional format but so full of helpful information on our speech, how we say, how we get angry, how we retaliate, and just stopping and thinking about the way we communicate. So there's a whole lot to learn about relationships. We are bombarded with information, whether online or in society, whatever. And just take your time for any relationships. If you see those red flags, talk to others. A lot of times they may be trying to tell us, trying to point the way, and we don't want to listen. So take the time, pray about it find out some more information that will actually help your life. And as I said on the nurseand.com, there's a lot of help right there on that relationship RX, that relationship prescription tab. And then just Googling different things online, there's a lot of interesting information about how to deal with red flags in relationships and just some general consensus. They have you creating healthy relationships ahead of time with other friends and family so that when maybe if you're 
meeting someone different that's not the best for you or you're avoiding annoying avoiding red flags that your healthy relationships can help you vent and talk about that and avoid that also to be comfortable being by yourself sometimes the reason we do ignore red flags is we're fearful about being alone or maybe whatever whatever is in our past or in our minds that maybe um, plays in our mind too much that we worry about being alone or worry about different things that have happened in our life. So just be comfortable being alone. Spend that quiet time with God and he'll actually teach you great and mighty things that you didn't even know. Um, know your limits. Stick to them. Hang around positive people, people that aren't trying to tear you down. Um, and said another one said that we ignore red flags sometimes because we are afraid that the red flags are telling the truth and it could be painful or we think that our intuition is wrong. But, you know, in hindsight, most of the time, those red flags and our intuition is correct. So learning how to think about that will definitely help you and you don't want to ignore the red flags. Not to say that relationships can't work with some work and some prayer and some patience, but we do have to set those boundaries and we do have to get off to the right start and follow um, our godly instincts and our prayers and what our friends and loved ones are telling us. So of course you're going to want to continue to finish, continue to ride along with this drama to see what's going to happen with this relationship. It actually goes on through all of the six stories in the book. And book one is Sheep Among Wolves, where you're going to follow along with the frontline workers, the mental health workers, the nurses, the police, the case workers, the doctors, the paramedics and social workers and so much more as they try to help those in crisis of mental, physical, and spiritual. And especially in this book one, Sheep Among Wolves, the young lady that's just been rescued off the street, um, not really sure how to navigate her situation. Hopefully these workers and others can help her. And then in book two, we're going to jump into Dr. John Doe. You're going to learn about memory disorders and those that love them and help them. And book three is a tent under the bridge, homelessness, awareness, and advocacy, and just find out more about the relationship of the workers and how the patients and the characters from the other stories interact. And then the fourth story is Defenders of the Week. And we're taught, in even in the Word of God, to look out for those who are weak and need help, even the widows and the fatherless, and we're going to look into more also about the homelessness advocacy in that story and find out once again what's going on with the relationships and the drama of the workers and those they rescue. And the fifth story is ready, willing, and able. You're going to have more awareness for autism and disability awareness and find out that sometimes those that others might think are limited in their ability can find out how they can actually be the actual heroes and what their superpowers and their life strengths are. And that leads you into the season finale, which is out of control. We're going to talk about relapse and addiction and celebrate recovery and just wind up the whole season, the whole story and tie it all. Find out what happens at the end to Leon and Lita and all the characters. You're going to love this. You can listen on the podcast or you can just go ahead also and get that complete story. The Mental Files, first six stories, edition by Nurse Anne. And there is a link on my website at nurseanne.com. So that's going to do it for this episode today of nurseanne.com podcast and the free audiobook reading. And that was the chapter called... 16 was The Unhappy Couple. And guess what? Chapter 17 is titled Crash. So you definitely don't want to miss what's going to happen in the next chapter called Crash. So I'll see you on the next episode of NurseAnd.com. Have a great day.